my man Godfrey. Welcome back to Movie Recap. Today, I'll recap a 1936 American screwball comedy film directed by Gregory LaCava and starring William Powell and Carol Lombard, who had been briefly married years before appearing together in the film. The story contrasts the poverty of forgotten men during the Depression with the spoiled lifestyles of the idle rich. The film was deemed culturally significant by the United States Library of Congress and selected for preservation in the National Film Registry in 1999. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. During the Great Depression, Godfrey Smith Park is unemployed, living with other homeless men down on their luck at a New York City dump in a Hooverville on the East River near the 59th Street Bridge. A spoiled socialite named Cornelia Bullock offers him $5 to be her forgotten man for a scavenger hunt. The annoyed Godfrey refuses, causing Cornelia to retreat and fall on a pile of ashes. Her younger sister and rival, Irene, is watching and tries to escape, but Godfrey sits her down to talk to her. He asks about the scavenger hunt. After talking with Irene, Godfrey finds her to be kind and offers to go with her to help her beat Cornelia. In the ballroom of the Waldorf Ritz Hotel, Irene's businessman father, Alexander Bullock, waits resignedly. His friend says that this occasion presents a scene of an asylum to which Alexander replies, To start an asylum? All you need is an empty room and the right kind of people. His wife, Angelica, and her mooching protege, Carlo, bring a goat and its baby. Everyone is trying to register their findings. Godfrey arrives with Irene. The jury authenticates him as a forgotten man by asking his address and touching his beard to check if it was real. He is proven to be real, allowing Irene to win the cup. However, Godfrey takes the opportunity to address his contempt for the audience's antics before leaving in a huff. Realizing what she brought him into, an apologetic Irene follows Godfrey and asks him what she could do for him in return. He says he could do with a job as he is unemployed. So she hires him to be the new family butler, which he gratefully accepts. Her mother disapproves her impulsive position, but Irene isn't bothered. Cornelia enters the hall with another forgotten man, but comes to know that Irene has already won. She is intrigued at him becoming the new family butler. Irene gives Godfrey some money so he can buy himself some clothing for the job interview, which falls out of his pocket as it is torn. On his first day as the new butler, Godfrey is warned by the Bullock's maid, Molly, that he is merely the latest in a long line of butlers who didn't last long, due to the Bullock's conflicting personalities and antics. Despite this, Godfrey proves to be surprisingly competent as he serves a drink to hungover Angelica, who sees Pixies. The drink makes her well very quick, and she is impressed. Next, he goes into Irene's room to serve breakfast, who yells at first, but then demands breakfast, and asks Godfrey about his shaved beard. She says she feels mature and grown up as she has hired a protege just like her mother. Mr. Bullock finds Godfrey coming out of Irene's room and considers him suspicious, but the maid tells him that he is the new butler. Godfrey is resourceful in his duties, but Cornelia holds a grudge against him and reminds him of the night when he pushed her. Irene overhears and comes in praising Godfrey's clothing she picked out. Cornelia nags Irene for falling in love with a middle-aged butler. Cornelia intends to get Godfrey in trouble and have him dumped back into the streets. Irene threatens Cornelia to tell Mr. Bullock of her secrets if she does anything of that sort. Carlo enters, followed by Mrs. Bullock. Soon, Mr. Bullock arrives and tells the family about their undisciplined behavior. He tells them to control their spending as he, has, as he also has to pay huge amounts of taxes. Godfrey enters to serve a platter of appetizers. Cornelia takes the opportunity to warn Mr. Bullock of Godfrey. She says he has come from the streets and may stab one of them in the coming days. Mr. Bullock agrees with her. Irene gets upset and starts having a tantrum. She says if her mother can sponsor Carlo, she should be able to sponsor Godfrey. Cornelia leaves with her boyfriend, uninterested in Irene's tantrums. Mrs. Bullock lies her on the sofa and tells Carlo to perform a gorilla act for her. He climbs up the sofas and acts like a gorilla, much to the pleasure of Mrs. Bullock while Mr. Bullock cringes. He takes the tray of alcohol Godfrey brings and leaves. Mrs. Bullock says that Irene has developed feelings for Godfrey like she did for her Pomeranian years ago. She tells Godfrey to remain by her side and leaves with Carlo to attend a concert. When Irene is sure everyone has left, 
She calms down and brings Godfrey closer by mouthing something. When Godfrey comes closer to hear what she is saying, she kisses him. Nervous and confused, Godfrey rushes towards his servant quarters. In the kitchen, Molly asks him about the lipstick mark on his lips. Godfrey rushes to his room to clean his lips. Irene follows him. Irene, who has grown extremely fond of Godfrey, is unsure how to express her feelings towards him. Godfrey senses it and tells her not to mess up her life and his job by acting like this. He forbids her to come to his room ever again. Irene throws a tea party. Carlo practices music for the party. Godfrey brings flowers sent for Irene and arranges them in the vase. While Irene acts shattered and broken to get Godfrey's attention, but he doesn't budge. Cornelia makes fun of Irene and self-invites herself to the tea party. At the party, Irene keeps following Godfrey and coldly disregards Charlie's greetings. Charlie goes off to the bar. Eventually, at the party, Godfrey is recognized by his longtime friend Tommy Gray. He gladly tells everyone that Godfrey was his colleague at Harvard. Godfrey makes up a story that he was Tommy's valet at Harvard, to which Tommy plays along by embellishing Godfrey's story with a non-existent wife and five children. Tommy and Godfrey decide to meet up at lunch the next afternoon. Cornelia eavesdrops on them. Upon hearing that Godfrey has five children, a dismayed Irene impulsively announces her engagement. Someone asks if her fiancé is Charlie, and she impulsively says yes. People bring the surprised Charlie Van Rumpel, who keeps on asking, when did he propose? Cornelia nags Godfrey about Irene's engagement, however, Godfrey isn't bothered. Mrs. Bullock tells Godfrey to congratulate Irene, who breaks down in tears and flees. Mr. Bullock supposes she is crying with excitement and lets Mr. Bullock know about her engagement. Godfrey leaves. Over lunch the next day, Tommy is curious to know what one of the elite Parks of Boston is doing as a butler. His family is keeping face by telling everyone Godfrey has gone away for a research project. Godfrey explains that being crossed in love affair left him considering suicide, but the undaunted attitude of the homeless men living at the dump rekindled his spirits. He philosophically tells Tommy that he found himself in the dumps. Cornelia, who is sitting at the bar, sends her boyfriend to phone Tommy and keep him busy. When the waiter takes Tommy away for a call, Cornelia comes to Godfrey and asks what conversation he was having with Tommy. She says she heard Park's family, but she couldn't make sense of it. Godfrey makes up an excuse that it was something about a stroll in the park. Cornelia asks about his opinion of what he thinks of her, and he frankly tells her that she is a spoiled brat. She leaves upset. Cornelia attempts to take her revenge. She asks Godfrey to get her evening dress dry cleaned and plants her pearl necklace under Godfrey's mattress. On Godfrey's day off, Irene, still in shock after learning that Godfrey is married, comes to put flowers in his room. She discusses her feelings with Molly, who also has a crush on Godfrey. Both of them cry. At breakfast, Cornelia pretends she has lost her necklace and calls the police, intending to have Godfrey arrested and sent away to prison. After investigation, the officers go to Godfrey's room where he is lying drunk. However, the police can't find the pearls with Godfrey. Cornelia asks them to check inside the mattress, but the necklace isn't there. Mr. Bullock deduces what Cornelia was up to. He asks the officers to forget about the whole thing and promises a check in return. He furiously informs Cornelia that the pearls are not insured and that she will lose a great deal of money if she doesn't find it. Cornelia is distressed and Irene makes fun of her misery. Godfrey brings Tommy to the dumps and introduces him to his fellows. He tells Tommy that across the dumps, there are casinos and restaurants where rich people talk about how hard their life is, while these people living in the dumps have high hopes even when they're about to lose even the dumps. He discusses a project for these homeless people with Tommy. The Bullocks send their daughters to Europe to get Irene away from her now broken engagement. But when they return, Irene is still gloomy. Godfrey serves drinks and Mrs. Bullock asks him to tell both of her daughters that he missed them. Cornelia implies to Irene that she intends to seduce Godfrey. A worried Irene follows Godfrey to the kitchen. Godfrey is washing the dishes and she offers to wipe them. She asks him if he missed her as much as Cornelia. Godfrey says he missed her a little more than he missed Cornelia. He tells Irene that he is going to resign soon. And as his friend, he owes it to Irene that she is the first to know about his successful project. Irene gets distressed about him leaving, but when he tells her that he didn't have a wife or five kids, she is relieved. 
Cornelia asks Godfrey to polish her shoes and tells him that she ran into a member of the Park family from Boston. Godfrey asks what she learned, and she offers him a long drive in a taxi to tell him in exchange if he tells her what he did with her pearl necklace. To nag Irene, she says out loud that she wants to share some intimate secrets with Godfrey on the taxi drive. Irene forbids Godfrey to go with Cornelia. Godfrey says, although he is not planning to go, it is his choice to go or not. So Irene stages a fainting spell and swoons into Godfrey's arms. Godfrey picks her up and brings her to her bedroom. However, when he goes to get some sniffing powder from her dressing table, he realizes that she's faking it. He puts her in the shower and turns it on. She wakes up abruptly and starts screaming, You love me! Mrs. Bullock sees them and gets upset. She tells Godfrey to go downstairs and Irene to put on dry clothing and join them. Having enough of Irene's behavior, Godfrey announces his resignation as the butler. Before Godfrey is about to leave, Mr. Bullock comes in upset. He throws Carlo out of the window telling Mrs. Bullock that they can't afford her useless protege anymore. He announces to the family that their business is failing and that he tried to recoup the losses with his stockholders' money behind their backs, which will land him in prison on embezzlement charges and leave the rest of the family penniless. However, Godfrey provides good news for him. He tells Mr. Bullock that he tried to help him, but Mr. Bullock didn't approve it, so he took the liberty to do it himself. He had sold short, using some of the money raised by pawning Cornelia's pearl necklace to buy up the stocks that Bullock sold. He gives the stock back to Mr. Bullock saving the family from financial ruin. Mr. Bullock goes speechless. Godfrey also returns the necklace to Cornelia, who concedes defeat by confessing to planting the necklace in the mattress and humbly expressing her gratitude and remorse for her behavior. As Godfrey leaves, the grateful Molly and the Bullocks are saddened to see him go. When Irene comes, she notices everybody's distress and Mrs. Bullock tells her that Godfrey is gone. She is determined to follow him. With Godfrey's remaining profits, Godfrey and Tommy become business partners as they convert the dump into a fashionable nightclub called The Dump, creating new jobs for the other homeless men with an incoming housing plan for new apartments. Tommy asks Godfrey about Irene. He asks Godfrey the reason for not getting married to her. He says, everybody in New York City knows about her feelings towards Godfrey. Irene makes it to The Dump. She asks the whereabouts of Godfrey and goes into his office. She says hello to the mayor who has been invited as the guest of honor. When she comes to the office, Tommy smirks and lets her in. He leaves, saying he has important things to do. Irene comes in and starts looking at the place, telling Godfrey that she would love it here. Godfrey is still confused, and her driver brings in the baskets full of a month's groceries, which Irene thinks would last a week. Godfrey asks her about what's going on, and she says she has left her house and will marry him. She invites the mayor who is the guest of honor, in the office to serve as a minister while having her driver serve as a witness. She tells Godfrey, stand still, it'll only take a few minutes. If you like a good laugh, do watch this movie. It's hilarious. Like the video if you love the movie. Subscribe to our channel to help you pick out the best movie for you through recaps. See you soon!